Hello and welcome. My name is Waldo and this is a Detroit Diesel 353 that I recently rebuilt and reinstalled into this machine. Today, I'm going to try to start it for the first time. Now, in case you didn't see the video for part one, I introduced this machine, which I've named Dino, and I reinstalled this engine. Before I can get this started, I have a few things to do. Things like adding oil, filters, and checking the fuel system. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to hear the distinctive two-stroke exhaust note of this engine. If you've ever had any experience with a Detroit diesel engine, tell me about it in the comments. I'm gonna start by checking the fuel in the fuel tank. I have a pump here that's intended to pump oil out of five gallon buckets, and I'm gonna to try to use it to extract some fuel out of the fuel tank. I've already pumped some out and it looks sort of like diesel fuel. It might be a mix of uh, road diesel and off-road diesel, but uh, it smells like diesel. Anyway, I'm gonna keep pumping some out. So I pumped out about a gallon of fuel from the fuel tank and it smells like diesel. It sort of looks like diesel. Um, it looks like there might be a little bit of red dye mixed in there, which is not surprising. Um, now this pump does not go all the way to the bottom of the tank. It probably comes down to about here. It goes most of the way down. But because water is heavier than diesel fuel, this doesn't really tell me whether or not there's water at the bottom of the tank. Uh, so I'm still probably gonna drain the tank from the bottom to see if there's any water in there. So I pumped out as much of the diesel fuel from the top of the tank as I can. Now I'm going to try to drain the rest of the fuel from the bottom to see if there's any water in it. And I'm going to need a bigger wrench. Well, the 24 inch wrench might be overkill, but you know, sometimes you need a wrench this big. I wouldn't say it's overkill. It's pretty hard to get off. No, I didn't see any water. Uh, it looks like it's just diesel. Uh, okay, I guess it's getting pretty full here. Uh, oh, oh, all right. Ooh, that was close. Oh. I didn't know if it would fill this bucket up, but uh, the answer is yes. Yes, it did. All right, well, anyway, I'm confident that the fuel in there is fine at this point. Next, I'm gonna do the fuel filters. There's two of them. I'm just gonna dip this O-ring in uh, clean diesel fuel just to help it seal. So the cartridge filter goes right in the filter housing. And I filled it most of the way with clean diesel fuel just to reduce the amount of time it takes for the engine to start.
You might ask me, why am I putting grease around the oil filter housing here? It's because this seal, I'm having a really hard time getting this to line up with the uh, filter housing and not fall in to the filter housing. So I'm gonna try to stick it on here uh, with this grease. Much better. That's amazing. All right, it's time to add some oil. Uh, I bought four gallons of Shell Rotella T1 SAE40 straight grade, so hopefully that should be enough. <laughs> After two gallons, there's a little bit of sign of oil on the dipstick, but it's still below the, uh, the lower dot. After three gallons, uh, the dipstick shows that it's full. But because I changed the oil filter, uh, that needs to get filled up with oil. So I'm going to check it again after I run the engine. Now it's time to install the radiator fan. All right, it's a few days later and I'm back at it. It's about 25 degrees out today, so it's pretty cold to be starting up a diesel engine for the first time. But I have a heater that's been running for a little while to try to warm up the engine block. I didn't film it, but I came out here yesterday and I redid the battery wiring so that I have two batteries. I also added a battery on off switch so I don't end up pulling a millennial farmer with a dead battery all the time. All right, I'm about ready to try to start it. Um, the key in the cab doesn't do anything. Nothing happens when I turn the ignition on. So I'm going to use this uh, pair of pliers to uh, jump a couple of the terminals on the starter solenoid. So the fuel system is full of air right now. So it's going to take quite a bit of cranking to uh, get the fuel pump to fill up the fuel system up with fuel.
nothing. I don't know if it's too cold out, the batteries are too cold, or the engine is just too hard to turn over right now because it's cold. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what to say. I might just have to try this when it's a little bit warmer out. Not gonna lie, I cheated a little bit after I wired up the batteries. I tested it out to make sure it turned over and it did. This was yesterday and it was probably, the temperature was in the 30s, uh, probably mid 30s Fahrenheit. Today it's mid 20s and it's windy and it's really cold and the batteries have been sitting out overnight so uh, it doesn't seem like they have the juice to start it. <sighs> Rip. So here I am, it's another new day. Previously I had determined that the starter was no good so I ordered another and $380 later and a few days later here I am. I just got the new starter installed. While I was waiting for it to come in, I also redid some of the wiring so that now I can finally use the ignition key to start it rather than shorting out the terminals on the starter solenoid. All right. Turn the batteries on. So with the RPMs there, um, and then oil pressure, we're gonna wanna see that. Are we ready for this? It'll probably take a little bit of cranking since it needs to feed fuel into the cylinder head. Oh, the oil pressure gauge moves a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it says I have about 12 and a half PSI of oil pressure. That's not right. Here we go. Oh yeah. All right, so I've been working on this all day trying to get it to start, and I've noticed two things so far. So number one, uh, I noticed that it's not building up any oil pressure, and I don't know if that's expected for this particular engine. In dealing with other engines, I have seen other engines build oil pressure while cranking uh, before they start, but I don't know if, if this particular Detroit uh, is supposed to build pressure uh, while the starter motor is cranking it. Number two, uh, I checked to see if the fuel was kind of getting sucked into the fuel system, and it was not. So then I noticed that the engine is actually turning in the wrong direction. Now, I don't know if maybe I got the wrong starter motor, or if the backhoe is actually a positive ground system. Right now I have it wired as a negative ground system. So I have to figure this out, but um, that, that's where I stand today, and I'm going to call it a night, because it's starting to get dark. All right, so here we are. It's several days later, and I just got the new starter installed. Uh, this time, hopefully, it's the right one. So uh, let's see if this thing starts. It looks like there's a little bit of diesel leaking out of this uh, this tube here, so that's uh, I'm gonna have to deal with this and tighten it up. But that does tell me that diesel has made it up to at least to the first injector, so I think this thing's gonna start pretty soon. Here we go.
right, so I did see the oil pressure gauge spike, and you can actually see that there's some uh, there's oil pressure being delivered to the rocker arms. So this is excellent. All right, so bad news. I just checked under the engine, and there's a big puddle of oil. And if you look up, you can see oil dripping down from underneath the airbox. So it looks like the airbox gasket gave out and is spewing oil all over the place. Well, today things didn't quite go to plan. If I go back to the clip of the last start attempt, at the very end, you can hear a popping and oozing sound when the blower gasket blew out. I just ordered a new blower gasket, so I'll replace that in the next video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see how this turns out. Thank you for watching!